Welp, this episode had a lot going on. We're talking All the Queen's Men, episode 14, Retribution. Okay, y'all, so this episode is going to start right where the last one left off, and that's with your boy Babyface taking out Miss Patty. Now, I know he wanted to get rid of her, y'all, but dang, I mean, he really got rid of her. Now, we're going to talk about that whole situation on a whole nother video. Meanwhile, the potential new dancer, uh, Big D, you know, he's going to try to talk to Babyface. He wants to get some information about Club Eden. Now, Babyface really was just blowing him off because he was trying to get the heck up out of there, but something tells me that this is going to come back to bite him in the behind because we know that some Somebody saw something. Somebody always sees something. Now, meanwhile, the concierge is going to introduce Madam to Fernando, his little brother, and he's going to want him to run point. Now, Madam is not feeling this at all, y'all. She's like, I deal with you. You know, I don't know him. I deal with you. And he's just going to let Madam know, like, look, I really need your help with him. You know, you're the best person to handle this situation. And we're going to find out that Fernando was in prison and that his brother wants him to be a part of the business. But in order for him to be a part of the business, he has to know how to handle himself. He has to calm down. I mean, apparently he's a hothead. Now, not only does Raphael want Madam to help with his brother, but he also tells her, like, look, I got to put some distance between the two of us because my wife is on one. Now, we all know that Lotus made quite the threat to her husband. She told him that if she even thought that he had any type of feelings or was even the least bit interested in her, that she would have her gun down in the street. And she seemed to have meant that. Now, although Raphael says that they need to put a little bit of distance between them, Madam asks, when is she going to see him again? And he's like, whenever you like. And I'm just like, OK. But anyway, y'all, she's going to want to see him later that night and they're going to make plans to see each other. So, you know, it is what it is. So meanwhile, your girl Blue is going to call our good friend, the devil in the blue dress, Jenna, and she's just going to check in on her. But when she talks to Jenna, she's going to be like, hey, like, why is your cell phone not on? And Jenna's going to be like, I didn't want my husband to track me, you know. And in this moment, you know, we're going to realize that she is really, really scared of her husband. And she's just letting Blue know, like, you know, I, I don't want him to be able to find me. And Blue is like, is he really that bad? Now, meanwhile, as we're looking at this, we've already kind of figured figured out that Fernando more than likely is the husband that she's speaking of and he just happens to be right there at Club Eden and he and Blue are about to have an encounter with each other which further lets us know that these two are definitely about to clash. So anyway, y'all, Fernando comes out and he's talking to Blue about this whole situation about the club and like saying, what is it? And, you know, it makes this much money. And Blue is just annoyed by this whole dialogue with him. Like she just doesn't want to talk to him. And he tells her that she has a nasty attitude. So now before I forget, Madam did agree to let Fernando run point and to help him out and to do what the concierge asked her to do, basically. So he will be showing at the club club a lot and this is going to be so much fun to watch y'all so anyway back to the junkyard guy the racist junkyard guy that actually wants him some dark meat like literally y'all like he, he he won't amp real bad I mean you just can't make this stuff up y'all now, meanwhile, Midnight and Doc are going to be having a conversation because, of course, Doc is still going through something. And that whole Teresa situation has really gotten to him seeing that baby die like that, seeing her jump out in front of the bus. Like, you know, it just is what it is. But Midnight is there for his friend and just lets him know that they've been through a lot of stuff. Now, meanwhile, Madam is going to come in and talk to Doc, and she's going to let him know that she believes him, that she believes that he would never do anything like that. But she does warn him that Blue and Tommy just don't believe him. And he's like, do I need to go talk to them? And she's like, no, I got this, <laughs> because he really don't want to talk to those two right now. Now, meanwhile, Dime is out here talking to Blue, and she is just on one, y'all. Dime just needs to calm down, like, because she's been working my nerves for real. Like, she just be, like, on 100. I get it. I really do. But girl, you work for Madam. Like you've been around her long enough to know that she going to take care of this situation, like that she going to figure it out, like she going to get it done, especially when it comes to her family and especially when it comes to AMP, especially how everything went down, she going to ride for him. Now, meanwhile, your girl trouble, y'all, old trouble. She is really trying to get back at Casanova for what she assumed he was going to do. Now, she believes that he was going to hit her. And so now she's going to be like, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him you don't mess with me. You know, so she has this grand plan of getting all her people together and and they gonna jump him, you know? So she's been trying to be really, really cool with him. She even tells him how she gonna get his record uh, back for him. 
how she gonna talk to Tommy and get it back from him and all this good stuff. So she talks him into not leaving because he was actually about to leave. And I'm just like, dude, you supposed to be a cop. Like, like you should be able to read the bullshit because trouble is doing nothing but BSing you right now. But anyway, he decides to stay. And when it all comes down to it, trouble ends up telling him to go and get his stuff back. And when he tries to go get it back, he just gets shot down. And Tommy's just like, get the heck up out of here. Like, I was like, bro, you was not finna get that back at all. Like, I know you didn't really think that that's what was about to happen. So anyway, y'all, Trouble is still talking to him. And she's just trying to be all nice and all this extra stuff. And when she actually gets outside, she tells him she's going to walk him to her car. And then all these people show up and they're about to jump him and take his money and all this stuff. But just so happens, Blue pops up. And she ends up saving your boy Casanova because he was about to get the business for real. Now, this is going to be really awkward if he actually comes back to work and you're there. I mean, I don't even know how this is going to work out. So anyway, Blue ends up telling her, look, don't bring no mess like that up here no more. Do not bring that kind of heat up to the club. So hopefully Trouble will listen and sit her behind down somewhere, y'all. So anyway, y'all, your girl, Madam, gets everybody cleared out of the club so that she can bring those junkyard men in so that they can talk and discuss what's needed in order for her to go and get her nephew back. Now, they actually come in with like too much testosterone, too much rah-rah energy, just doing way too much, like talking way too much noise and not realizing who they were actually talking to. I just found it very interesting that you just thought you were going to come in there and she pushed a dude out the window, y'all. Like every time I think about that, like in broad daylight, in a hospital, in a public place, she took him and rolled him out the window and walked out of the hospital like it was nothing. So I'm just trying to figure out why these fellas thought they were just going to roll up into her turf in her club and talk mad-ish. Like it just didn't make no sense. So when she asked him a question and he didn't answer it and she told him she don't like repeating herself. So boom, she shot him. And then next thing you know, boom, boom, two more people were shot. And then next thing you know, the other dude who was still talking no Next thing you know, she shot him in the leg, but somebody had to go back and tell the story. So she didn't kill him, but she did shoot him. And then he kept calling her a bitch. And every time she said bitch, he got another bullet. You know, you thought he would learn. And even when he was walking out the door, he said bitch again. And she shot right at his head. I guess it's true. Some people just don't learn from their mistakes, y'all. Now, meanwhile, y'all, Babyface goes to Midnight because he needs some help. I mean, he's scared. He doesn't know what to do. So he goes to the one person who knows everybody's secrets, it appears. Now, of course, when he gets there, Midnight is in the middle of an orgy. I mean, what else would we expect from Midnight? This is what he's always doing. I mean, when is he not doing this? I'm just saying. So anyway, y'all, he explains to Midnight what happened. And Midnight just tells him, like, look, did anybody see you? And he's like, he doesn't think so. You know, and I'm just thinking to myself, somebody saw you, bro. But anyway, we just going to roll with this for now because there has to be a whole, this is a whole nother situation when it all comes down to it. And then Midnight is going to tell him like, look, at this point, she just jumped, you know? So in my opinion, it really didn't help because I feel like this is going to come back to bite him at some point. I don't think that that's really a solution to the problem, but also what can he really do? I mean, when you really think about it now, Midnight is going to tell him, Hey, you can stay here tonight because they're probably going to be looking for you because he believes there is a warrant out for his arrest for that whole phone call that Miss Patty made. Madam is going to have a lot of mess to clean up with these fellas because they just doing the most. And I'm telling you, y'all, El Fuego is going to get caught up in something at some point because everybody seems to be in something. So meanwhile, y'all, the guy has made it back to his fearless leader, Dexter, weirdo Dexter, and he brought him a present and he looked in the bag and turns out Madam has cut the heads off of those fellas and sent it right back to him. And I was just like, dang, and you still want to mess with her, right? She literally just cut the heads off of your men and sent them back to you. Now, what I am trying to figure out is what happened to all the rest of the men because it really felt like they went in real deep, but I only saw her kill three and then she wounded that fourth one. I'm trying to figure out what happened to the rest of these fellas because it didn't look like they all came back. I, I really feel like we only saw the one come back, 
But anyway, y'all, I'm just rambling. So meanwhile, Madam is getting very impatient, waiting on them to figure out what they're going to do. So she just decides to go in. So in true Madam fashion, she goes in to talk to Dexter and Dexter starts trying to go in with his BS, talking about how she killed his brother, yada, yada, yada. Now, I will say this. Madam did ask very nicely for him to just listen and not interrupt her while she was talking. But, you know, Dexter just doesn't listen. Dexter still thinks that he's in control. And when it's all said and done, after Madam figures out if Amp is okay, after, you know, she tries to have a conversation, she tries to make a trade, he just won't shut up. So she just cuts his throat. And, you know, there's that. Now, meanwhile, oh boy, that actually came to the club to give the message is sitting there bleeding out, but he's not saying anything, but he's actually not dead yet. He's just kind of sitting there, y'all. Now, they are going to get Amp and they are going to try to get out of there, but they're going to notice that there is no signal on the phone which means something is definitely going down because somebody is jamming the signal so that they can't make any calls out. Now, once they get outside, they are going to be greeted by police lights and someone is going to pull up. Now, of course, they have these guns. They got bodies on the inside and you're just like, dang, Matt, I'm going to go out like this. Man, how's she going to get out of this situation? Now, they're going to actually arrest Madam and they're going to put her in the car. But what we are going to notice really quickly is is that they're going to get in the car and leave. And I'm just like, Tommy, somebody, y'all, y'all don't see that these ain't police. Like y'all not going to like start shooting, like do something. I don't know what to do, but just do something. But uh, Tommy doesn't realize it, but Amp does realize it. Like, hey, these are not cops. Now they have actually disabled their car so they can't even go anywhere. So they can't even chase after them. So it looks like your girl, Madam, has gotten kidnapped, y'all. Now who has kidnapped Madam is the million dollar question. And you already know I'm going to have a separate video where we're going to try to talk about that and figure out what in the heck is going on y'all so that's what's up with episode 14 retribution let me know what y'all thought about this episode because there was just so much going on and let me tell you i was here for those heads in the bag don't ask me why but i was so anyway y'all go ahead and get the conversation started down below and if you like this video make sure to go ahead and like share and subscribe to your girl channel do not forget to turn on your notifications meanwhile if you missed what happened on episode 13 go ahead and check that out now until next time guys Peace.